The Gospel of our Lord from Mark 11 for our consideration tonight, verses 12 to 14 and then 20 to 25. The next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves, because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. Then the... That's where that ends. Verse 20. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. This is the Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, dear friends in Christ Jesus our Lord. How's your fig tree doing? You know the fig tree in your backyard? Or the fig tree that's on your property at your apartment or your townhouse? The fig tree, right? I'm getting a lot of blank stares. This is kind of awkward because I... I wrote the whole sermon expecting that everybody had a fig tree in their backyard. So what are we going to do now? Here's what we're going to do. Because Jesus is not talking about a tree, then neither are we. Jesus is talking about people. He's talking about our fruit and our leaves. Our leaves and our fruit. The outward signs of our inward faith, because Jesus wants both of them. Every single step that Jesus took was deliberate. It was on purpose. Every place he went, to every person he went, to everything he went to. And so his steps this evening have led him to you and to me, to a bunch of fig trees. And what does he find? Mark chapter 11. We're told the next day as they were leaving Bethany. Jesus and his disciples are staying just outside of Jerusalem in a little town called Bethany. They're probably staying at the home of Mary and Martha and their brother Lazarus. Lazarus, whom Jesus has just recently raised from the dead. They're staying just outside and they're going into Jerusalem in the morning. Sunday has already come when Jesus entered Jerusalem in that uh, triumphant fashion on the day we call Palm Sunday. And Mark says this is the next day, Monday. The next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. They apparently didn't get any breakfast on their way out of Bethany that morning. And Jesus is eyeing up a snack in the distance. It's a really neat detail that Mark gives us that Jesus is hungry. Kind of makes our imagination spin a little bit. What was it like for the Almighty God to have a rumbling tummy? Maybe even a better detail than that. It says that he wanted to go and find out if the tree had any fruit. It had all kinds of leaves, but he wanted to go find out. The one who knows all things wanted to go and find out. Seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. And when he reached it, he found nothing but leaves, because it was not the season for figs. I'll be honest, I don't know anything about fig trees. And I won't bore you with any of the details of the things that I learned along the way, except for this one. That when a fig tree in season buds, it buds both fruit and leaves. The leaves are essentially showing off the fruit that it has underneath. But this tree is all leaves and no fruit. Its leaves are showing off, but it has nothing to show. And then Jesus said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. 
and his disciples heard him say it. Does that sound a little bit out of character for Jesus? Does it sound like he's getting maybe unnecessarily upset or even throwing a little temper tantrum like a child? Or worse, like a, an adult acting like a child? It, what, what is this from Jesus? Is he, is he upset because he didn't get that snack? He's hungry. What would, what would be the word that you and I would use? Is Jesus hangry in this moment? This sounds like an outburst like you and I would have in a moment of frustration and just some ridiculous outburst and just condemn whatever the thing is in front of us. That sounds a lot like you and me. But that doesn't sound at all like Jesus. Jesus is warning his disciples and he's warning you and me to all leaves and no fruit may no one ever eat from you again. They heard him say it. Now you and I have heard him say it. Here's our question tonight. Doesn't the planter of the tree have the right to expect fruit from it? Doesn't our creator, our redeemer, uh, our Lord and Savior, doesn't he have the right to expect fruit from us? Or are the leaves, the outward show, is it just for us? There's a gap in between these verses, if you notice that. And what takes place right in between? Right after Jesus pronounced that curse upon the fig tree, he goes immediately into Jerusalem and into the temple. The temple of all places on earth where worship of the true God should have been found. Where the, the rescue and redemption of Israel, the blood of the lamb on that doorframe, would have been the beating heart of that place, of all places. But what did Jesus find when he went in the temple in Jerusalem? A whole lot of leaves, but no fruit. Instead, he found a place filled with greed and theft and idolatry and self-righteousness. Of course, we know what Jesus did. He drove it all out. What does Jesus find when he goes up to your fig tree? What does he find when he walks into your temple? A whole lot of leaves? Does he find the greed and theft of, of other people's praise for ourselves? Or the outward show of good, but I'm really only being good so that others will be good to me, otherwise I probably wouldn't waste my time. Or an outward show of love that everyone else would see, especially so that they would see how much better I am than everybody else, because that's really what's kind of keeping me going. A whole lot of leaves, but no fruit. Walking into the temple, seeing a whole lot of leaves, doesn't the planter have a right to expect fruit? But if the leaves and the outward show are just for us and for others to see us, then the disciples heard him say it, and you and I have heard him say it too. Then may no one ever eat fruit from you again. But dear friends in Christ, our Savior, in his final steps, led him to a fig tree, your fig tree, you. And he reaches underneath the leaves and he finds something, something that he put there. He finds repentance. He finds the sweet fruit of, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for my greed and my theft of other people's praise. It, it doesn't belong to me, it belongs to you. And Lord and Savior, forgive me for my idolatry and self-righteousness. I don't need others to look with favor upon me. I just need you. And our hungry Savior, he feasts on that fruit. He finds that fruit to be the sweetest, most delicious fruit there is. The only fruit that's good enough for him because he's the one that created it. Who created the fruit of faith in you and me. To know that Christ Jesus died not only for the sins of all people, but even better for me. And that all our sins on him were laid. And by his wounds we are healed. Nothing delights him more than that fruit. Therefore, nothing delights us more than that fruit. You know, Jesus once told a parable about a fig tree that's really similar to what actually happened here in Mark 11. 
In the, in the parable in Luke 13, uh, Jesus was talking about a man who owned a vineyard and was talking to another person who, uh, who tended to it. And the owner said, you know, I planted a fig tree uh, and I've been coming back to it for years looking for fruit and I've never found any. Cut it down. Why should it waste up the soil? But then the one who tended to the vineyard said, no, hold on, sir. Let me look after it. I'll dig around it and I'll fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, wonderful. And if not, then cut it down. Dear friends in Christ, what joy is ours that the law of God's word has dug into our soil and, and brought us to repentance. And that we have been fertilized by the good news of the gospel to trust in everything Christ has done for us. The forgiveness of our sins. That's the fruit. And we don't forget about the leaves either. Jesus said in John 15 that it's to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit showing yourselves to be my disciple. That's the leaves. Whatever it is in whatever God has given you in your life, whether at home or at work, in any of those relationships here at church, whatever it is to show your thanks and praise and your honor and glory to him who died for you, that's the leaves. And so it is both fruit and leaves. The final verses of this text. In the morning as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. This is the next day. Peter remembered and he said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. They remembered what Jesus had said, and, and we do too. Now I think if this was like some Hollywood action blockbuster, and Jesus had just caused a, a tree to wither down to its roots, then maybe right here he would have said something cheesy to get his disciples all pumped up or riled up. He would have said something like, well, you haven't seen nothing yet. Or wait till you see what I'm going to do to those who oppose me. Jesus doesn't say anything like that. Instead, to his disciples and to you and me, to encourage us, and to empower and embolden us in our fruits and our leaves, Jesus said, have faith in God. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. So of all the fruits of faith that Jesus could have narrowed in on, uh, kindness, gentleness, patience, uh, humility, uh, Jesus goes after prayer here. Which is kind of ironic, he's talking about the outward visible leaves, but here's the one that, that nobody sees except God himself, prayer. Trust and faith in our Almighty Savior leads us to talk to our Almighty Savior. Talk to him about those impossible things that we can't figure out, knowing all the while that that mountain of our sin has already been thrown into the sea. And so then, what other impossible mountains remain in your life? Maybe there's a lot of them. Jesus says, bring them to your Savior, boldly and confidently. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. And as you stand there in prayer, Remembering all the while how in the world that that prayer is possible in the first place. That God gave you his son. That all your sins are forgiven. And then just as Jesus taught you to pray, that we forgive those who have sinned against us. And in all of it, it is both fruit and leaves. As all of us make our way to the cross following Jesus' final steps, Rejoice, dear friends in Christ, that along that way his steps led to a fig tree where he created fruit and leaves. Amen. Please stand. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guards our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.